What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. You guys have no idea how good it feels to be right back in front of this camera and with 51,000 subscribers. Like y'all, round of applause to myself, round of applause to y'all. I could have only dreamt of this moment. I can't believe like not too long ago I was like thinking about like quitting YouTube because it felt like my channel wasn't growing and also I just didn't feel the motivation to post anymore but this feels so good and I'm keeping the momentum going. It's been a little difficult with having my nine to five now, my big girl job, but I'm here and I'm ready to talk my mess, okay? <laughs> In today's episode, we have a little bit of wine, a little debrief from my very long day. I'm 21 years old, please drink responsibly and please drink at the age appropriate time, okay? But yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the shenanigans and we're gonna be discussing the fall of Kim Kardashian. I was gonna combine Kim and Chris, but Chris, when I was in my research, Chris needs her own video for herself. Chris needs her own video, okay? <laughs> this isn't like my favorite wine, but just my luck that I'm posting this video during the Kanye West shenanigans that are going on and now he's getting a lot of his endorsements taken away and we all know Kanye West or if you don't know Kanye West is Kim Kardashian's ex-husband so this is like crazy timing and I think just the whole Kardashian empire is being discussed a lot which is why my, these videos that I've been doing are blowing up but it's let's get into the mess we're not gonna go too much into that okay <laughs> so without further ado let's get straight into this video Kimberly Noel Kardashian was born on October 21st 1980 making her 42 years old today. Kim Kardashian rose to fame as she surrounded herself with some of the most elite social classes. She hung around Paris Hilton, she hung around Brandy, she hung around Nicole Richie. She was always caught in photos. She then started dating Brandy Norwood's younger brother Ray J and then that's when an infamous tape came out. Now we're not going to be talking about the rise of Kim Kardashian so that technically doesn't matter because that's when she rose to fame. We're going to fast forward about 15 years later and get into the fall of Kim Kardashian. So the start of Kim Kardashian falling was with her lying about her plastic surgery. So that's alleged because she denies any form of plastic surgery. But a lot of people do presume her buttocks to be fake and she denies it and a lot of people find that to be very problematic. Problematic in ways that younger girls that look up to her are thinking that their bodies are not right because Kim Kardashian's looks that way naturally. So they go and opt to get plastic surgery to look like Kim Kardashian. The whole time they don't even realize that Kim Kardashian went and got that same fake body as well and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Allegedly she got that fake body. Don't try and sue me Chris. <laughs> Kim even went to the lengths of doing an x-ray on their television show Keeping Up With Kardashians on E! Network. You ready for Kim's? Yeah. Dun dun dun. There's All right. a I see a cheeseburger. Ew, spine. Ew. I see an Oreo. That freaks me out. No implant. This is Shocker. Small. Kim. I am so glad that I did this x-ray just for the fact that my sisters annoyed me and were picking on me just to get at me and the whole world doubting me. This x-ray is like the best thing I ever could have done. The x-ray was of her buttocks and I don't know what the purpose of her doing that was because a BBL is not going to show up on an x-ray. Implants probably will but a BBL wouldn't and people suspect that she got a BBL so it didn't really prove anything besides the fact that she probably could still be lying. <laughs> When I say literally to this day she denies everything, she absolutely denies everything. Now you have to admit, Kim Kardashian definitely is naturally beautiful. If you look at throwbacks of her, she was stunning since a kid. But if you look at befores and afters, I can understand why people are a little bit suspect about the work that she has gotten done. And especially with her getting older, it's not surprising someone that's in the limelight and basically lives in Hollywood, LA, the very superficial areas, that she would be tempted to go and get some stuff done. But that is just one snippet of how Kim Kardashian has fallen. Now let's get into her problematic blackfishing. Kim has so many instances of her blackfishing, like literally. If you look at many photos of Kim throughout the years, she always seems to be very much tan and she tends to use her being Armenian as an excuse to why her skin is so tan. And we're not going to negate that Kim does not have a natural olive skin tone, but Girl, she literally looks like a light-skinned black woman half the time. Kim has denied appropriating black culture several times using her daughter, her eight-year-old daughter. Well, I think North is like nine or 
nine now, maybe nine, her nine-year-old daughter, Northwest, as an excuse. She says that she only wears braids and certain hairstyles and looks more ethnic because she's trying to appease her daughter, North. That's no excuse, and I don't even know why she's trying to drag North into it to begin with. There's so many photos of Kim wearing cornrows, braids, basically lots of styles that Black women wear. Whether it's box braids, knotless, cornrows, that is a part of Black culture. I personally do not care what people choose to do with their hair. I truthfully do not care because a lot of the hairstyles that we wear is not meant for thinner hair or looser textured hair. It's just gonna damage your hair and quite frankly, it does not look the best on you because it's not meant for you. But if you decide to do it, that's on you. I don't really care to fight like, oh my gosh, she's wearing box braids. I really don't care. Do what you want, hair is hair. Just do what you want. I, I really don't. I don't care. I'm sorry. And then, of course, we have to get into the cycle of her only dating black men. Now, she did date Chris Humphreys and marry him. We'll get into that a little bit later. But Kim only dates black men from what we see. And we'll get into her now newest ex-boyfriend a little bit later as well. But from the majority of men she's dated publicly when she was in her I want to be black phase, allegedly. <laughs> she was dating a large amount of black men and a lot of black women got uncomfortable by it. It seemed as if she was trying to be a black woman. And with the fake body, allegedly, it wasn't helping. The alleged fake body, the braids, the black men, the super tan skin, like you were starting to look like light skin Keisha, okay? <laughs> she even has that one photo shoot where she literally looks like a black woman, like literally. Like I. I saw it. That was a black woman. I thought she was Beyonce. There's lots of instances when she even does like Beyonce in some cases too. But yes, Kim has been called out several times for her constant black fishing or trying to emulate the black culture. And I think what infuriated a lot of black people so much was the fact that she would never ever admit to it. She would constantly deny it or just flat out ignore it and keep doing what she was doing. And that's why I always said I didn't understand why people would go underneath the comments whenever like, you know, the shade room would post Kim Kardashian and braids or Kim Kardashian with very dark skin, like super tan. I don't understand why people would like go and be like, oh my God, she's black fishing. She's trying to be like black women. She literally built her platform off of that. Off of all those accusations, it just gave her more publicity and she kept doing it, in my opinion, because she would get more notoriety. And I guess it worked out for her because she's literally billion dollar Kim Kardashian today. Some may argue she built a large amount of her income based off the backs of black people and the black culture and having a black husband Kanye West who already was very notified notified I can't even talk notable within the black community so while we're still in discussion with appropriating cultures we're gonna get into her brand kimono so if you guys know what skims is skims was previously supposed to be kimono and where do kimonos come from Asian culture. So Kim did a spin of her brand by using her name, Kim, and named it Kimono. And it upset a lot of the Asian community. So this happened back in, I believe, 2019 when Kim was first coming out with her brand that really had to do with shapewear. And like I said, that brand is now Skims today and it seems to be very successful. So if you guys don't know, a lot of Kim's brands are spinoffs of her name. Like she had the Kimoji and then she had KKW Beauty and then she came out with Kimono. So I don't think it was intentional but it does show how out of touch she is and if you don't know what a kimono is a kimono is an asian garment it is a traditional asian garment so a lot of the asian community took offense to this so after kim got dragged for this she immediately changed the name to skins i think it was like a day later kimono was no more and it was now skins and what infuriated the black community a lot was the fact of how quickly she changed the name i do not think if it was a name that was offensive towards the black community i'm not sure she would change the name that quick if at all so it kind of showed the lack of respect that she has for the black community versus towards the asian community Though she has a black husband, well, had a black husband at the time, and black children. Now, we don't know what happens behind the scenes when it comes to stuff like this, but I can see people giving the side eye towards how quickly she changed the name. But let's just say, for once, she wasn't infuriating just the black community. She infuriated other communities as well. I saw the Asian community speaking up about it, and then I also saw a lot of, like, white people speaking on it as well. People were noticing how she appropriates cultures so easily. And also how out of touch she is, because the fact that she didn't 
didn't think Kimono would be a bad name or her team didn't speaks volumes. Okay, so moving right along, we're gonna get into her 72 day marriage. So it may seem like forever ago, but Kim Kardashian married Chris Humphreys back in 2011. The wedding was a whole special. I believe it was like four episodes. I never watched any of the episodes, but now I'm actually curious. So when looking back at her and Chris Humphreys marriage, people suspected that Kim only got married to Chris for ratings and views. If you guys think about it, Kim was known for her relationships at this time. She was a lot younger and everybody was interested in who Kim was dating. And people are obsessed with love. Everybody loves a good wedding special. So I'm not sure if it was four parts, but I know there were multiple parts of this. Then after the series went on and happened, she was all over the magazines, the blogs, the show did very well. Well, the episodes did. Then she she says that she wasn't really feeling him and that she didn't really feel a connection and that she didn't really care to be around him. And it's confusing because you figured that out after the wedding. So people were giving her the side eye like, did you really have this wedding just so you can get some more money in your pockets? Because I'm sure she had tons of sponsors, brand deals and all was happening for her just for having this wedding. Now Kim did clarify exactly what happened with the wedding and dispelled any rumors that people were having or suspecting that she used Chris for money and even admitted that Chris also believed that she used him for money. This TikToker broke down everything she said in their series finale reunion. Things Kim Kardashian revealed about her relationship to Chris Humphreys. She knew going into the wedding that it wasn't going to last. She felt so much pressure from the show and everyone that was going to the wedding that she had to go through with it. Quickly after on her honeymoon, she knew it was over. There was this one time Chris had like a seven foot shoe in the middle of her closet and she was done. She wishes she could apologize to Chris Humphreys. Chloe and Kris Jenner told Kim not to go through with it before she got married. And she ran into Chris a few years later at the Beverly Hilton and Chris like refused to say hi to her. Kim said he's very faith-based and that he tried to get an annulment. And that's why Chris put fraudulent wedding on his divorce forms because he thought that Kim only wanted to get married for TV. But Kim says it was actually genuine. She was actually in love, but she knew that it was over leading up to the wedding. Now their marriage literally lasted three months and all over all the tabloids. And I still remember because I was like 11 or 12 at the time was all about her 72 day marriage. And it's so funny because 72 is not even a number that's memorable, but everybody knows 72 day marriage equals Kim K. <laughs> It's been alleged that even Chris Humphreys believes that he was used by Kim. And once again, I did not watch these episodes, but I'll watch TikToks and people speaking about it. And they say things of the sort that Kim and Chris literally had zero chemistry. Like they had no chemistry and it was so blatant and obvious. So talk to me. How was your day? My day was good. I feel like just like laying down on this thing and like taking a nap right now. We go on our first our date is kind of awkward it's kind of like our relationship we don't have much to talk about it's just weird yes yes Thanks. so people speculate she did this all for a money grab I think this was one of the first reasons why a lot of people start looking at Kim sideways and not really trusting her because she will come off as untrustworthy with her fans or viewers when it comes to anything that she tells them. But yeah, let's get into more recent news when it comes to Kim. And this is when the fall really, really began, I feel. We're gonna be talking about Kim's competitive spirit when it comes to her sisters and even jealousy. There are a lot of instances, especially when it comes to her older sister, Kourtney Kardashian, where Kim constantly drags Kourtney through the mud. Now we all get a little bit of sibling rivalry and I understand that sisters argue, but it seems as if Kim takes it to the next level. Kim and Kourtney tend to go at it a lot and it seems as if at one point, Khloe Kardashian and Kourtney Kardashian were very close, but Khloe is now hanging out with Kim more and siding with Kim more and it seemed to have ruined Khloe and Kourtney's relationship. And a lot of fans will that the reason why Courtney and Chloe don't seem to be as close anymore is because of Kim and Chloe kind of picked Kim as the side to be on because Kim is the person that made her as wealthy as she is today. Guys, I do not like this wine. Like I'm, I'm not a fan. It's very dry, tart, might I say. And it kind of smells like poo. <laughs> But yeah, Kim literally named Courtney the most least interesting to look at. She constantly fights with Courtney. She got upset that Courtney didn't want to disclose her most recent relationship 
after literally having her relationship plaster all over television with her toxic ex Scott Disick and literally gave birth twice on camera none of the other sisters did that Courtney showed her entire life but Kim still didn't have enough but Kim basically got upset that Courtney wanted to be more private saying that Courtney wasn't doing more work she said to Courtney that she literally gave her the job that she has now and then of course the infamous fight that they had on the show where I think Court who slapped someone slapped someone but y'all have probably seen it right now but there were slaps involved their relationship just doesn't seem to be there though they post each other and they're very happy-go-lucky who knows if the fights are like fake or not but from my point of view it seems like Courtney don't really like Kim and she's over Kim Kim gets called out a lot for coming for Courtney in general now there also are some beliefs that Kim is jealous of Kylie Jenner though I don't really see this as much but that's what some people believe people think that she copied Kylie cosmetics by making KKW beauty which is no longer in existence or at least she said it's on a hiatus but it hasn't come back since people just think that she's intimidated by Kylie because Kylie kind of took her throne though I don't necessarily think Kylie took any throne I think Kim Kardashian still is Kim Kardashian and she has held a lot more momentum than Kylie has as I already did a Kylie Kardashian fall Kylie Kardashian <laughs> as I have already done a Kylie Jenner the fall of Kylie Jenner video Kylie is only 25 and I think that her momentum ended after like five years I would say like five years in and Kim though I don't think she's as popular as she once was and people aren't as mesmerized by her anymore that doesn't take away from the fact that she literally is the beginning of what the it girl is so no I don't think that she is particularly jealous of Kylie and I think she gives Kylie credit when it's due but I don't know that's what people are saying <laughs> now let's get into her and Kanye's breakup now we are not going to be doing a whole deep dissect of Kim and Kanye's breakup because there's a lot of pieces involved in that and I already listed a whole bunch of other things I know I'm gonna be editing this video forever okay <laughs> but with the Kanye breakup we all know Kanye constantly mentioned Kim's name and he will constantly say that he wants his family back to together and have several emotional breakdowns but 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 a lot of people speculate Kim was gaslighting Kanye throughout this whole process people believe that Kanye was not acting crazy for no reason and most of the times people don't act out for no reason there is always a reason behind it and most of the time it's because the other party is making them lose their mind Kanye is a whole different case so who knows but a lot of times when you are acting out of the ordinary it's because someone is making you act that way though you should still be able to control your own emotions it does happen here and there <laughs> but yeah Kim kept asking Kanye to please stop speaking on her Kanye would post text messages of her asking that and everyone was like oh my god Kanye stop speaking on Kim and blah 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 but Kim was very quiet for a while because what it seems as if is that her show was coming out which was their new show on Hulu the Kardashians and she started are speaking on their marriage several times honestly the whole entire first season whenever it was Kim segments it had to do with her being single and dealing with Kanye West and then getting into her new relationship which we'll get into a little bit later but it just seemed as if Kim was trying to play this good girl character this good girl role and act like no I'm so removed from the situation I just don't care anymore but the whole time she probably was saying things behind closed doors that we didn't see now let's get into my favorite conspiracy theory and that has to do with Kim Kardashian dating Pete Davidson as a PR stunt. Kim and Pete's relationship was very much so short-lived. I believe it lasted like six to nine months between that. I'm not really sure exactly but their relationship lasted under a year and many fans including myself <laughs> speculated that Kim only got with Pete Davidson to compete with her sister Kourtney Kardashian. Am I the only one that thinks that Kim Kardashian is like copying her sister's life, Kourtney? Like Kourtney started dating a rock star and she got a lot, a lot of attention and now I feel like she's doing everything she did. But you know, like it's like always a competition. At the time, Kourtney Kardashian just started dating the rock star Travis Barker and the relationship was getting so much attention all over social media. Everybody was loving them. Everybody was loving how carefree they were and how Travis Barker seemed to make Kourtney so much younger and youthful and just full of life. And then Kim got with Pete and he also has lots of tattoos and he's white. <laughs> 
<laughs> people are like, Kim don't do white. And the theory that she was only getting with Pete as a PR stunt because she saw how successful Courtney's relationship with Travis was. And not just only the PR stunt, but also because she was jealous of the attention Courtney was getting. And though Kim was in the tabloids and on the blogs a few times with her relationship with Pete, there were always people thinking that it was a PR stunt. You did have people that liked the relationship, but you also had people, a lot of people that were like, this doesn't seem real, it seems fake. Kim is so much older than him. Like this just seems like a PR stunt. Whereas Courtney's relationship seemed a lot more organic. So that's why a lot of people were questioning the legitimacy of the relationship. And I guess it could be thought that Kim didn't like all the attention Courtney was getting because at one point she said Courtney was the least interesting to look at. And Courtney does have the least following out of all the sisters. But all of 2021 and 2022, she was getting so much love for her relationship. Now, once again, these are all speculations. We do not know 100% whether or not this was fake, but just looking at the photos of them and then whenever she would talk about him, it just seemed a little forced to me. I'm just saying. <laughs> Moving on to Kim becoming white again. So while Kim was with Pete Davidson, people noticed that she started getting very skinny. She stopped tanning as much and her hair was blonde. So Kim has lost a lot of weight within the past few months, I would say. Ever since the last Met Gala, she lost a ton of weight, which she was candid about. She was trying to fit into that Marilyn Monroe dress. So these two points are gonna be combined. So with everything that I listed, Kim losing a ton of weight, her having blonde hair now, and then her having her natural skin tone and not tanning so much, people were like, okay, so Kim made her billion dollars. She's no longer with the black man. She had her black children. And now she's with the white man. And she's like, okay, I'm done being this caricature. Now I'm ready to be my Self again because I want to be taken more seriously and it could be seen that she was doing that because as we all know Kim is in law school or she she passed the baby bar or something but yeah Kim is working towards becoming a lawyer she also really is a biggie on prison reform she's in different spaces now so she wants to be taken more seriously by being white Kim is like the leading definition of the BBL aesthetic and now that so many women are getting BBLs I'm sure Kim is like okay this isn't really high fashion anymore or like high class because a BBL was technically considered that because most of the normal people couldn't afford it because it was an expensive procedure. But now there are payment plans. You have so many different doctors doing it because it's so normalized. So people also believe Kim removed her BBL. But if we're being 100% real, the BBL aesthetic, the BBL look, or should I say the female rapper look, is not taken seriously outside of Black culture. When it comes to Black culture, we accept those things. We think it's like, okay, girl, you got it. It's a part of hip hop culture. But outside of that, if you're put in certain spaces, you most likely will not be taken seriously. Now, I'm not saying to go change yourself or don't be who you are, but we gotta be real. In other spaces, more upper class spaces, that's not seen as someone that they would wanna work with or listen to. It sounds bad, but we gotta keep it 100. What's praised in the black community is not always praised in other communities. So as I said previously, a lot of people suspect that Kim made her first billion dollars from profiting off of black culture. And now that she made that billion dollars, she's like I don't need this culture anymore so I'm moving on to being white again and even if she didn't say that blatantly it could be something subliminal or honestly something that we all just are making up in our heads I could see why people have come up with that perspective because it does seem as if she completely changed her aesthetic and that goes into the Marilyn Monroe dress when people were infuriated with her people started getting really fed up with Kim at this point because she wore one of the most iconic dresses in American history the dress Marilyn Monroe wore to sing happy birthday to the president. And that dress is literally history. Kim decided to wear the dress to the Met Gala and it made so many people upset because she tampered with history. Many people believe that that dress should be in a museum and it should not be worn. And there also were allegations though, Kris Jenner has denied it and I think Kim has also denied it, that Kim ripped the dress. Those are just speculations. We don't know 100% sure or not, but it seemed as if the dress was torn because there were photos and evidence of that. But Kim also lost a ton of weight to get into that dress and she still couldn't fit it. Dear Lord, should we sing hallelujah or something? Pray, pray. Oh my God. You got it. No. Can push, no. Can push it. Push what? Push I, your ass. Push your ass. Like where? In. <laughs> push. Right. Oh. 
Is that pair of reinforcement? Do I need to put on another pair of shapewear? Please, maybe that can. Holy shit. Once it gets up, it'll fit the yeah. back. Here you go. No, I don't think so. Here you go, relax. Should I go to the gym? Relax. Relax. No. We can even get it halfway. Wait, let's see how much not. Oh my god. So Kim wore the real one, then wore the replica on the red carpet, well, the Met Gala carpet, because she couldn't fit into that one. Because Marilyn Monroe's body was a normal body. Kim has a alleged manufactured body, so of course she wouldn't be able to fit in that dress. Tell everyone for a while, okay, so we can have some fun this yeah. summer. For me, I just feel that history should not be tampered with. I personally wouldn't have wanted to wear the dress because it's a part of history, and I don't know, there'd be some bad mojo on things. I'm not gonna wear nobody's dress, especially someone of such a high status and high caliber. And I also wanna mention, Kim did not only wear one of Marilyn Monroe dresses, she actually wore two of them. So we all know Kim wore the dress that Marilyn Monroe war to sing Happy Birthday Mr. President to John F. Kennedy back in 1962. Following the Met Gala at the Met Gala after party, Kim decided to change into another one of Marilyn Monroe's dresses and it was the dress that Marilyn Monroe wore to the Golden Globes back in 1962 where she received the Henrietta Award for World Film Favorite. The dress was beautiful, stunning actually, but it just creeped people out. And then also when Ripley's Believe It or Not gave Kim Kardashian a strand of Marilyn Monroe's hair and she got so creepily excited about it, saying that she's gonna clone her. Okay, this is either really cool or a little strange, but that's who you're doing business with, right? So. <gasps> what is this? That is Marilyn's hair. can clone her. That's awesome. Oh my god, I'm literally going to do some crazy voodoo shit that I want to do my way. And I channel her. This is so special to me. Thank you so much. This is so cool. So cool. Good vibes. Wow. This is sleeping with me every night. Sorry, babe. Y'all know there's allegations that the Kardashians are witches, right? I'm not going to say too much on that. It's alleged, but... I don't know. <laughs> but now let's get into Ray J exposing Kim. Once again, it was a very, 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 very long list of receipts, but in synopsis. The biggest conspiracy theory in all of Hollywood history is that Kim Kardashian was so desperate for fame that her and her own mother pimped her out by filming and distributing her sex tape. You know there are people who say that you put it out yourself. Why would anyone put that humiliation on their family? Ray J is finally telling the truth after 20 years because he's sick of Kim and Chris trying to make him look like the bad guy or that he had anything to do with leaking the tapes. We going through receipts tonight, Chris. We going through receipts tonight, Kim. You want to see the tape contract? There, there it is. This whole narrative that Kim is the only victim and Ray J is still holding this over her head is starting to lose Ray J business opportunities and affecting his life as a father. He got me all of the sex tape back. I met up with Ray J at the airport and got it all back for me. Oh, that's amazing. Did you help Kim release her sex tape? No. True. Of course it's true. So Ray J went on Instagram Live and pulled up everything. Like the sex tape contract itself, showing what they signed to, the deliverables, the fact that they each got 12.5% of the rights, and each got $400,000. Paris Hilton also cooperated with the story that friends of hers have leaked sex tapes to get famous. So Ray J said when Kim and Chris saw that success, they planned out leaking Kim's tape. And it's confirmed that Kim is aware of all these tapes because she's the one who wrote out the deliverables in her handwriting. Then Ray J exposed texts that him and Kanye had where Kanye specifically requests that he gets back footage and contracts that Ray J and Kim signed. Then Ray J exposed some pretty nasty texts he sent to Kim. I don't want to expose the real shit that we did, but you're leaving me no choice. The whole lie you and Chris planned since the beginning. Kim's response was that she's sticking to her story, she didn't leak it, and that she can control the narrative in the press so they both look good and move on but if Ray J wants to keep yelling at her he can sue her she doesn't care anymore and allegedly though Ray J showed some documentation of what he was talking about the entire thing the entire sex tape was planned out by Kim 
and Kris Jenner so involved that Kris Jenner watched the sex tape. Well, the multiple sex tapes because Ray J said they took multiple and Kris picked out the best one that she felt Kim looked the greatest in. And she made them record all those tapes just to still pick the first one. What the? But like I said, Kris has her own separate video for another day. But Kim Kardashian, though she has not come out denying this or saying anything about this situation, people were like oh my god after all these years this in fact is true so many people have speculated that kim released her own tape because paris hilton just did the ever that she did it in was the rise of the leaked sex tapes and so many people got fame off of it and why wouldn't kim kardashian that's hanging around all these elite people these socialites why would she not want to go and do her own sex tape with a celebrity that was bigger than her at the time. So it was kind of hard to believe that she didn't release her own tape. And we don't know 100% sure, though Ray J did show lots of proof, but I'm not gonna say nothing until I know there's concrete proof on that. But let's just say people were not feeling Kim and Chris after that because it's like, you really sat there on live time and time again, both her mother and her. The first episode of Keeping Up With Kardashians was about the sex tape, like literally. And Kim going on the Tyra Banks show to speak about it. It's just, y'all. So in synopsis of Kim Kardashian falling, a lot of people are starting to see the BS, should I say. They're starting to see through what wasn't so clear in the past. But as always, I wanna know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think that Kim Kardashian has fallen? Do you think that she ever will fall? Do you think she's gonna get even more popular over the years? Let's get the discussion going in the comments. Thank you guys so much again for 50,000 subscribers and counting. Like insane at first i thought it would be crazy to suspect that we would hit 100k by the end of the year but i don't think it's too far-fetched my birthday is at the end of the year literally my birthday is december 30th christmas is december 25th okay so that would be the best birthday and christmas gift i can't believe two years ago i hit 10k on christmas day and then last year i hit 20k probably at the, it was in december but it was like around the christmas season and I'm hoping we are gonna like quadruple that, okay? By hitting 100K or more December this year. But thank you guys so much again for the support. I love you guys so, so, so very much. Bye guys. Mwah.